So humans have a rich history of breeding genetic stuff ups because they look pretty. And plants are no exception. Although science has allowed us to selectively breed and create higher yielding and more resistant food crops when it comes to ornamental plants, the story is a bit different. Don't get me wrong though, some ornamental human created plants including succulent cultivars are masterpieces that are stunning to look at, easy to propagate and hardy. But in my personal opinion as a grower some should really not exist or at least not be sold so widely. In this video I'm going to explain why and how these succulents are created and the reasons why they should not exist. There are some super informative resources describing modern methods of creating new plants and for anyone interested in reading more I've dropped the link in the description. In this part I will briefly explain some of them without using a lot of confusing terminology but if you're interested in more detailed explanation I'd highly recommend reading these. The most common ways new human-made cultivars come to existence are hybridization, selective breeding or genetic modification. Ornamental plant breeding is a huge competitive business and in the last decade succulents have seen a massive rise in popularity. So many nurseries have converted from other crops to succulents for this reason, myself included. About 11 years ago I started out in the cut foliage business for the florist industry and had huge greenhouses full of ferns that you often find in flower arrangements. If you are one of our customers this is why the name of my business is Fern Farm Plants. Around this time new succulent cultivars started coming in thick and fast. There are some controls before new cultivars, especially GM plants are released on the market but in recent years it feels like the wild west. I would liken it to backyard animal breeding where checks for disease, genes and temperament are often completely disregarded in order to make a quick buck. And the problem arises from commercial nurseries as well as backyard growers. Plants with high susceptibility to disease are crossbred or selectively bred because of their colors or mutations. Weak or inferior plants are sometimes not discarded and used in propagation creating whole batches of poorly bred succulents. And plants with very limited gene pool are also over propagated. They can be one of a kind mutations that go on to be mass produced via tissue culture. Pretty much anyone can contract a tissue culture lab, send in their plant creation and hope it can be produced this way en masse. All of this can result in inferior plants that grow poorly, have low tolerance to more challenging conditions like mild heat waves and are highly susceptible to disease. But because they have a unique color or shape it makes them desirable and people will buy them even if they have the drama queen reputation. Many will argue having the choice is good but I think some of these plants should not exist. While a lot of them can be grown in a controlled environment such as a ventilated climate controlled greenhouse most people don't have one of those. And it is very likely the plant is going to die after a few months or even sooner. The good news is not all cultivars created by humans are bad. There's so many great well-bred succulents you can choose from. On top of that species of succulents that grow in nature can also be bought and they tend to be pretty hardy. It can be a bit overwhelming trying to find good plants but my one suggestion would be to spend a few minutes on the internet and look through lists of hardy succulents. If you're looking for full sun succulents search that. For indoors look up full shade succulents. They will mostly be quite different to your sunny ones. After you find a few that you like write down the names and see who stocks them. In most cases the hardy types will also be less expensive as they are generally easier to grow and propagate. I have my own list which I will post a link to in the description and also at the end of this video. And lastly it may be better to buy from nurseries as they should have some checks and balances to weed out any inferior plants. It is not always a given but typically they will employ horticulturalists that can spot problems. To conclude this whole video don't be too hard on yourself if some of your plants die as it may be down to poor genes and bad breeding. And that is all for today. If you have anything to add to this video you can do so in the comments. 
To learn more about succulents, hit the subscribe button or you can go to our website succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.